Hi, I'm Casey Hayward from Vellin Honeybees, and here we are on the farm where we live with our bees. Um, I've been a beekeeper for roughly about 17 years now, and I've got the job of my dreams. Before that, I lived the high life in London. Spent all day on construction sites and all night drinking champagne. So I've gone from a really high life of driving sports cars to working all the time and driving honeybees around. And I wouldn't change it for the world. So over here, we've got some of our beehives here on the farm. Um, we have six in this location that we use for teaching and um, some of our breeding bees. But uh, as you can see, no suit on yet. Very, very calm, very, very lovely bees. But this is where we do most of our work. So if you'd like to get suited up, come and join me. This is a standard national hive, which is quite commonly used as, uh, for beekeepers in the UK. There are certain sections to the hive. We have our main entrance here. Inside the main entrance, it's a bit cold today so you can't see them, but there are what we call guard bees. And every bee that comes into the hive will be checked to make sure it belongs to this colony. We have the brood. Now this is where our queen bee lives. Her only job in the whole hive is to lay baby bees. Then she'll lay every 22 seconds, day and night, from about March, April, right the way through till the pollen stops, round about mid-September. So this is called a super, or a brood and a half. Now, above this, because in summer this is bursting full of bees. We have a metal gauge and our honey super. This is where we create our honey. The reason it's called a super is it supersedes what the hive actually needs to survive. And we never take honey from the hive if it needs it. And then we're going to, ooh, very sensitive to vibration. And then I'm going to put the lid on gently like this. And then on goes the lid to keep them nice and warm. When it gets a bit colder, we'll actually put what's called a bee blanket inside the roof. And when I say bee blankets to people, they giggle because they think I knit individual little bee blankets for all the bees. I'd love to have the time to do that, but with 1,600 hives, I don't. So it's um, an insulated panel that just keeps the temperature of the hive quite consistent. Uh, bees die of wet, starvation and disease at the moment. So all a beekeeper can do is safeguard against uh, those three things and hopefully bees live through winter. This time of year we, we have to feed our bees because with climate change our weather is getting more unpredictable but as our climate gets warmer the bees are active for longer so they use up more food so because the stores of honey are running low, we top them up with a sugar syrup, which will keep them alive. Because at the moment, apart from the gorse, there are no flowers around. It's warm water and just basic cane sugar. And then we pop a Himalayan salt in there just to give them a few minerals. There we go found it. The bees will come up through here, cling to the side 
and then slowly feed off the sugar syrup. They're so gentle and um, they're not here to hurt you and they definitely won't sting if they're unprovoked. So if you see them actually on a flower, um, you can actually take a photo of them. They're not like, wasps are highly aggressive and they can sting more than once. And as you can see, they're crawling all over my finger and they're really not bothered about me. They're just being nosy. A lot of people say uh, being a beekeeper is about honey production. For me, it's conservation. Because without these little girls, we'd really be in trouble. They're seriously in trouble and need our help. They do need help. And let's face it, without bees, we wouldn't have food. Bees are responsible for pollinating a huge amount of our food. They don't just make honey. Without bees, we wouldn't have apples, cherries, oranges. Believe it or not, they're even responsible for the nourishment of our cattle. So if you like a burger, you can thank a bee. We all have a responsibility to look after them, not just as beekeepers. Our bees need flowers, and they need flowers fast. They need flowers that, that are here all year round. So next time you plant your garden, if you think of our bees, choose lavender, choose your buddleia. Don't cut your lawn. Love the dandelions, because our bees do. If we all play our little part, it will make a huge difference to our bee population.